call this meeting of the Board of Trustees to order. Please stand with me and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as the Honorable Ed King gives our invocation. Almighty God, we acknowledge that you hold us to account for the way we legislate and administer the affairs of our township and its fine people. We pray for your guidance as we do so. We pray that you would find us protecting the rights of all at all times, that our community and this nation will fulfill all of your purposes. Amen. 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 Clerk Christie, please take the roll. Ms. Kavanaugh? Here. Mr. Christie? Here. Ms. Jackson? Here. Mr. Kennedy? Here. Mr. King? Here. Ms. Taylor? Here. Mr. McCray? Here. Former President? Uh, next, we'd like to get a approval of the agenda. I know that uh, I was pointed out to me by Treasurer Kavanaugh that there should have been a person, Jacqueline Harper should have been added to the alternate list for MERS. We can move that down to news number seven if there's a problem. If not, we can just make that adjustment at this point. If there's any objections to making adjustments at this point? No. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm looking for an approval of the agenda with the, with the adjustment. To the chair. Treasurer, I mean trustee uh, Taylor. <laughs> I move that we approve the agenda as amended. So far. Supported by Treasurer Kavanaugh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have citizen comments. We have one this evening. This is Michael Van Tull. Thank you so much, uh, Supervisor McRae, and thank you, uh, Redford Board of Trustees. My name is Michael Van Tull, legislative aide to Wayne County Commissioner Monique Baker McCormick. Wayne County Commissioner McCormick is calling for an open agenda item at the next Redford Union School Board meeting, hopefully on August the 12th, to address the multiple issues regarding the Olympia Street project. The commission has received numerous calls, even though she was not serving as commissioner at the time and had no prior knowledge of the project. She does not believe there was ever an open discussion for residents. And the commissioner is hoping that this open form will provide for a public discussion of the project and she understands why the public is upset. It is her hope that residents will have an opportunity for open communication and that alternatives can be offered as a result of this open conversation. The commissioner can be reached at 313-224-0885. If you need to contact her, uh, Commissioner McCormick is also hoping for a mur mural to be commissioned in cooperation with the Detroit Institute of Arts in Redford, and hopefully, if approved, it will bring local art into our community. And finally, applications are now being accepted for the Wayne County uh, C Commission Youth Council. They are open to Wayne County teenagers ages uh, grades 10 through 12 to become part of the incoming class of the commission. If you're interested in um, and know of a teenager in Wayne County that would benefit from this leadership program, uh, call, call this number 313-224-0884. Again, my name is Michael Van Tool. Thank you so much, board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, Director Bonerak. Presentation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, Honorable Board. Uh, while I thought all the members of my management team were going to be into me tonight, one of them is here. If you have not met her before, this is Rita Chidi, my senior accountant. Uh, that was part of the reorg that you approved in February, and she has been working out just fantastic in that role ever since then, and it's made a big difference in the way our day-to-day -day operations are going. Um, our chief accountant, Jathan Harper, was not able to be here tonight, and I was hoping that I would be able to 
formally introduce our new communications specialist and my marketing admin, Jennifer Miracle Best, but she had an opportunity to hear Governor Whitmer speak tonight. Mm -hmm. So I told her she should probably go do that. But she also um, has been a tremendous addition in the couple of months that she's been here. And I know that she's met with a couple of you already, but I do plan for her to meet with each of you to talk more about what uh, we can do to promote positive marketing and communication for the township. Other than that, tonight, um, officially, the only thing I'm here to do is present the first quarter budget update. As part of the Uniform Budget Act, that is something I'm required to do on a quarterly basis. And that is the one page, I guess technically two page spreadsheet that I passed out to all of you just before the meeting began. Um, as you may recall from past presentations, because we are an accrual-based budget and because of the nature of the way that things come in, our budgets are often run a good you know, 45 to 60 days behind where you might expect them to be. So even though we're more than 25% of the way through the year, that we have not necessarily posted 25% of our expenses or our income yet either. So that is completely normal, and that's why when I present this first quarter budget for all of you each year, I usually show you what the budget is for the year, what the activity has been for the first quarter to date, and what the activity was last year for the first quarter. I think that's a better comparable to look at how are we doing this year versus the year prior. I highlighted a couple that I thought might generate some questions, um, but other than that, and I'll talk about those, I don't really have any concerns about the budget. The first one being property taxes. Uh, you may notice that at this point it's showing zero for property taxes, and that's really simply because the settlement from Wayne County that we receive in May has not yet been posted, and um, obviously was posted last year. So that number will change. Um, so we, we have received that it just hasn't been formally posted yet. And the other one is that on state revenues at the moment it's showing a negative number, and that's because we received money in April that is actually for the prior fiscal year, so that's been moved back as part of the audit, and the next funds coming in haven't yet been posted yet. Again, that's kind of part of that whole, we're 45 to 60 days behind based on the way things come in. So that's completely normal. We're not actually at negative 14% in that column. On the appropriation side, I just wanted to highlight, because you might wonder, well, why is general government only at 4%? Um, most of those items are large ticket items that come in in big chunks. For example, our annual insurance policy is almost half of that number. So the fact that there's only 4% activity right now is very normal. And the PEG funds, public education and government, is showing a little higher than num normal because there are a couple of journal entries that need to be posted that will adjust that. On the other page, I highlighted um, in particular um, the Central Dispatch SAD, Fire, and the Fire SAD. And I really probably should have also highlighted the Police SAD on the page prior. And just to remind that because starting with this fiscal year, we have moved the SAD to its own fund. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first quarter that we're moving those things around. We're still doing some cleanup to make sure that everything is posting correctly. So in the end, and, you know, within this budget, the SED will actually show zero. And so there are some numbers that have to be moved around. And that's why they're showing expenses there when there was no budget for them here. Because the budget for those is in the SED fund, not the general fund. Other than that, there were, there's nothing that I have any concerns about with the first quarter review of the budget, unless there are questions from any of you. Like get a copy. I left one at your desk. Mr. Dennis is going to bring you one. <laughs> I wrote on the top. Sorry, <laughs> you can have it back. I was taking notes. Oh, you can have it. Thank you. The other thing that I passed out just briefly, you may have wondered why did I give you guys a copy of a mm -hmm. uh, canceled check. Um, but this was a fraud attempt that tried to come through three times, and I just wanted to say kudos to Kathy Anderson in the AP department and the treasurer's office team, because this is another example of how clever thieves are getting with their attempts to steal money. So in this instance, what this person did is 
those numbers at the bottom of that check are our bank account and routing numbers. And that amount of money was an amount from a warrant list of bills. So they pulled a warrant list of bills, they found somehow our account and routing numbers, um, which you know, is a thing to do, and then they tried to write a personal check to pay for their mortgage, and they tried to do it three times. And the only reason this got stopped is that one of the things that we implemented a year, maybe a year and a half ago now, is in addition to any check that presents to clear, does it have to match the check number and the amount? It also has to match the name to the letter. So we've actually had a couple of things that like someone went to clear and like for example, if they present if it was made out to Patricia Kennedy and you signed it as Patty Kennedy, that would reject because it's that specific now. That's what caught this was the fact that we implemented that additional level of uh, security. So I just thought you might find that of note, and uh, that's why I presented it for you this evening. Thank you. To the chair. Please just a quick comment. Um, kudos to your department because this is not the only time that things have been caught. Um, and in conjunction with my, de my department also, but kudos to your uh, finance department. Absolutely. So, Thank you. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't understand this. That he made the check out to himself. No, no, to. Uh, Arnaldo Venezuela Acosta? He did. So, so he's essentially trying to make it out to cash, right? But like that check number that's on there is a check number from our warrant list. He was trying to... Yeah. He, he wrote a check to himself, but he tried to draw on our, our account. account. Yep. Mm. Wow. Sneaky. Very yeah. sneaky. Um. So, so really, it was the printing down here that, that put us in danger, or that yes. was a threat. To the chair. Mr. Jackson. Director Byron, if you notice the signature on this check, it's not a signature. No, it's not. It's just the, uh, right. So you would think that the bank would have initially rejected that check. Banks are interesting institutions nowadays. <laughs> yep. To the chair. I'm trusty Kennedy. Um, has he been caught? That I don't know. Uh, you know, like this, because it says he's in Tucson, Arizona, but I don't have any reason to believe he actually is in Tucson, Arizona, right? So I don't know. Oh, actually, I do know, because on the second one, it says that they tried to deposit it in an ATM in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> so I, you know, I don't know, right? Um, he's all over so, the map. Right, so all over the map. Wow. Other questions from the board? All right, well, thank you. That is, I think, enough for me because she'll hear from me later this evening. Yes, for quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Consent agenda items. Treasurer thank Kavanaugh. You. Thank you, Supervisor McCray. I move to approve the consent agenda items as amended. Minutes of the regular meeting of July 9th of 2024. Minutes of the special meeting of July 16th of 2024. Minutes of the study session meeting July 16th of 2024. The warrant list of bills as of July 19th of 2024 in the total amount of $4,063,011.81. The annual MERS conference, October 10th through the 11th of 2024, selected management delegate Barbara Handy, Jacqueline Harper as alternate this year, and employee delegate Gerard Pryor, alternate Kyle Watts. Support. Supported. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business, Director Dennis. Mr. Supervisor, on award. Um, the first item tonight is a bid recommendation um, for the water department for our water service line investigation and verification. Um, we went out to bid uh, for this project and we did receive seven uh, sealed bids from contractors that uh, had a wide range from 320000 to almost a million dollars. And uh, we have had, we're working with Benish and Benish uh, went through everything as well with uh, ourselves. And we did receive a bid uh, that we went through, did references, 
Um, and the bid did come in considerably less than what we were anticipating, which is good for us. And we are recommending the award of this project be, uh, be awarded to Amerivac LLC in Jackson, Michigan in the amount of $320,800,000. One of the bonuses about this, this bid then, it allows us to be able to investigate and verify additional properties. And the grant that uh, this board approved from, the, from Eagle back uh, earlier this year is called the TMF grant, the Technical Manager of Financial Gr um, Grant that is only for um, for the verification investigation of proposed of material service lines. Um, so this is going to allow us to do even more than we thought. We, we proposed to do about 400. We're expecting since we did have a significant savings on this that we'll be doing even more. And, uh, so, so that's a big bonus for us. Um, so again, we're asking that the board please approve the bid uh, from Merivac in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson, Michigan. Uh, <laughs> Man, sorry, Minnesota. long drive. Uh, 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 in the amount of three hundred twenty thousand eight hundred thousand dollars. Eight hundred thousand. Yep. Yes. Okay. Questions from the board. To the chair. Trustee Taylor. Mike, um, just uh, a quick question. Uh, you say this is just for investigation and verification. Yes. But at the bottom it says funding is for the replacement of miscellaneous improvements. What does that mean? I just took a copy and paste and didn't correct myself. <laughs> so there is no replacement. No, there is it's not, strictly no. funding okay. for the investigation and investigation verification of the miscellaneous improvements. So we can cross out replacement of yep. miscellaneous yep. with investigation yep. and all right, brilliant. Thank you. That was this was an easy one to read or to do, and I saw all the other stuff. Yet. Okay, I just want to make sure yep. that I wasn't missing something. Nope. Thank you. Yep, no other yep. questions from the board? To the chair. Trustee Jackson. Mike, do you know how many additional, an estimate of how many additional homes you'll be able to investigate since this bid came in so low? I am hoping that if we looked at it, we can maybe do about an additional 100 houses. So um, it, it probably depends on what they get into on some of these, because there's some concrete restoration, things of that nature, depending where the stop box is at. Um, so I would anticipate maybe we get up to 500 on this. It just depends on how that the areas, things of that nature, could be 50 just based on what they find. But but we can do we can do more, which is which, which is great. Good. Yep. All free money on this one. Other questions from the board? To the chair. Treasurer Cavanaugh. I move to approve the bid recommendations, DPS Water Department Water Service Line Investigation and Verification Project to be awarded to a Merivac in Jackson. Michigan for nine two zero three in the amount of three hundred twenty thousand eight hundred dollars to be paid from the fund five nine two water and sewer support supported by Jackson. The motion is to approve approval of the bid recommendation EPS water department's water service line investigation and verification project to be awarded to a mayor of Act. Jackson, Michigan, 49203 in the amount of $320,800 to be paid from Fund 592 Water and Sewer. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Kavanaugh? Yes. Mr. Christie, yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Mr. McCray. Yes. Motion passes. Director Dennis. Mr. Supervisor, on old board. Um, in front of you is a memo mm -hmm. requesting um, approval um, for the capital improvement project known as the uh, Central Combined Sewer Overflow of the CSO Retention Base and RTB and Collector Sewer, which will be located at the former site of the Grove Development School Slash. Um, as this board knows, we've been working on this together for two to 18 years. Um, you know, depending on when we meet, it's always you know, hard to see it's almost right. Um, we've been working on it very diligently um, in the last two years, and then it, it ramped up uh, last year when we were awarded uh, funding from the state of Michigan um, in the amount of $54 million. Uh, 34 from a, a loan, uh, a bond, and then 20 million from a principal forgiveness. Uh, we were granted um, that in April of this year of some additional funds of uh, $10,800,000 for a total of 54 million, or excuse me, uh, $65 million. 
we put on a bid, and we had to do some, some bonding. And the bids after we came back going out in May, as, as we discussed at last week's uh, meeting, um, the bids came in, the lowest submitted bid was from Commercial Contracting Corporation in the amount of $100,324,000, Commercial Contracting Corporation in Auburn Hills. We had a second uh, bidder from Clark, Clark and Rick, Clark Construction, Rickman Construction, they did a joint venture out of Auburn Hills and they were $105 million, $821,100. We did uh, some multiple um, outreach to contractors during this process, two different outreaches between general contractors and subcontractors. Uh, great turnout um, at, at both events. Uh, we had one in uh, April and another one in uh, June. And we had at least six general contractors there and a teen amount of subcontractors that do the sewer work. Um, kept going through the process with Eagle. Designs were changing uh, due to Eagle input for permitting, things of that nature. Um, county, also with uh, the road restoration that will be taking place when the sewers are installed. Because uh, part of the process also involves a replacement of close to three and a half miles of sewer lines. You have to, uh, for the outfalls, the six outfalls that surround basically from Bell Creek Park coming around both sides of Western um, Country Club and then pick up again in Ross Drive coming around the far east side and come along Graham Street and then go across and then um, they reach out to, um, to Roosevelt Park going up the side street. That's where the facility will be located at. And then at that point, the, the water's just like it is at, at, at the North CSO at, at, uh, at Glenhurst. And it, the water's treated when there is a, a, uh, a, uh, a major storm event. And so it discharge once it's cleaned back into the river, which will then have a discharge pipe going through Western North um, <coughs> Just discharges the clean water. Um, as you know, we've, we've met a couple times with project plans. Uh, we did, we approved one in 22. And then we had to do an amendment this year, February of 2023, uh, due to the change of the scope of the project. Uh, past that, our bids have come in significantly higher. Um, myself, uh, Director Boderick, Supervisor McCray, uh, uh, Wade Trim um, have had meetings. We have reached out to the state. As of today, we did send them another letter regarding financing to, uh, to increase our financing um, by about another 50, uh, just under $52 million to uh, get additional bond financing at their rates at 2% interest over 30 years. Um, I know it'll be brought up, but we cannot exceed 30 years of the S SRF program, and their rates are at 2%, which again is exceedingly uh, a lot lower than what we would currently get on the market. Um, if you do have any questions around the project, though, I do have Steve Kalinowski and John Erie from Wade Trim behind us. Um, Steve's been part of the project since day one. Uh, John is, is a, uh, is a uh, special ad advisor to the project. He's a project advisor, senior advisor, and he is here. Kelly McCrow Acklin, who you've seen many times with Wade Trim, is actually on vacation this week. Um, she actually tried to cancel her vacation because of this, but um, they said no, uh, Kelly could have a week off. So, um, so John and, and Steve are here to answer any questions you may have also about the project. Um, so that's that's where we currently stand on this. If uh, all goes through, uh, we project to, um, and once we get the financing taken care of, we project the, this to start in probably January of 2025. Um, so we can do some work regarding um, both on the golf course to get that taken care of. Um, they have, uh, Western Golf Course is holding the Michigan Amateur there in 2026, and we want to get it done so it gets two cycles of growth season. We have to bore underneath one hole, which shouldn't have a minimal, and we have to do an open cut on the 13th hole, which is 10 feet wide by about 10 feet deep, and it gets filled in, and then it's, it's just, you know, work with them to, to get the, the grounds back to the normal that they have, the, their normal seats for, for the golf course. Um, other than that, everything's on the outside in the right of way. Wayne County has been an integral part of this. Um, Wade Trim, Steve, and Mark Preback uh, also needs a lot of this. Tom uh, has been involved, like myself and Tom, have been a, had a meeting every Tuesday with Wade Trim for almost a year um, at, at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. So there's been a lot of hard work. You've been part of this as well, um, Adam. And um, 
so we are, if there's any questions, we are looking to, once we go through this, get an approval to for commercial contracting corporation uh, out of Auburn Hills in the amount of $100,324,000. Questions from the board? To the chair. Trustee Taylor. Mike, um, with this bid, I know that um, we had kind of underestimated what the cost of this job was going to run because of our timetable, right? The eight months versus 18 months to get everything together. Yes, ma'am. Is there any risk of the contractor coming back? Is, is this a fixed amount? Can Is it 10% over, 10% under? Are there, do we foresee any other changes or requirements from Eagle once we approve this bid that will affect this contract with this company? Last Monday, uh, Wade Trim held a three hour meeting with both contractors. Um, and there's a, a lot of paperwork they went through, interviews with both companies. I think um, the uh, Clark Construction was in the morning, and I think they met with the commercial contract in the afternoon. Um, I would expect, obviously, there could be some change order. We, we, we do have the, that in the budget at 6% for the state. Um, so we do have contingencies within this project. Um, they did a lot of work, as we said, in eight months, and usually take 18 months. Eagle did a lot of changes that we kept going through. They they did two change orders, I think, within 24 hours of the bids being due, because they kept getting stuff from the state. The state just kept taking their time. Um, their their thresholds, as we have stated, their milestones are just so hard to meet right now because they're on a very strict schedule due to, due to their financing for the fourth quarter. Um, is there could be some change? Absolutely, there could be, yes. But it's, it's currently built into it right now. Um, I don't think, it, and and if Steve and Steve is especially if you want to go up to, uh, if I could just ask him if he didn't just face any further. I was not part of those, but we were dealing with this. Um, you know, could there be any other changes? Yeah. And we have we have most of our permits. There's a couple that we're still waiting on. But Steve, if you just want to briefly add anything into it, if you could. Yeah. No, I mean that's accurate. On any construction project, there's risk or unforeseen things that can come up. But uh, the state allows up to 6% of that loan amount uh, of the, 6% of the of construction contract as a contingency fund that they'll allow funding for. And so that has uh, proven to be, uh, to, to work on most projects unless you have a real catastrophe. Uh, even though we uh, had a short uh, period of time for the design, we did mobilize a big team of people to look at the, the various aspects of the job and to make sure we had it covered to the extent possible you know, within the plans and specifications. So we're comfortable with the design plans as they've been prepared. Um, as Mike noted, there are still some permits outstanding that we, that we need to obtain. Uh, we've put in applications for those permits. There may be some things, but we worked with the permit agencies during the course of the design to make sure that we understood what they would, were looking for, and they understood what we were providing within our design documents. So that goes a long way to minimizing change from that end of it. I guess what I, it, and I know we we have a project going now, Rick Willis Center, and contingencies were built into some contingencies were built into the price. Is the six percent built into this hundred million dollars, or is there that additional? No, it, it's added on top of that. So this is the, this, this this must plus six percent. Six point six percent. Six or six point six million dollars. It's actually six million five hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred dollars to be exact. But Mr. Supervisor, just the the total amount that we're asking for later, the 117 million, does include that 6% contingency. So okay. it's not 117 plus cents per year. That includes all of it. Yes. Okay. All right. Other questions from the board? To the chair. Trustee Jackson. You mentioned um, catastrophic event. Is it possible, or is it currently in place? any kind of insurance to cover a catastrophic event? Well, the, yes, well, the contract, contract includes insurance, you know, of the contractor for 
to cover uh, any items that are at, you know, that they, they're at fault for. So there's some, you know, certain insurance policies in place within the construction contract to handle any uh, unforeseen problem that comes up um, related to that, you know, the, the contractor's uh, work. Um, the, do we have, if you, are you asking, do we wait for him? I'm just asking if there is insurance in place yeah. in the event of a catastrophic event. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For what they're doing, yes. If it's a contractor's fault, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know how, how we describe, describe a catastrophic event. So it just depends what it is. But all the contractors are fully insured. That was mandated by the city. Yes. Thank you. Other questions from the board? All I can say is this, uh, this was a very unexpected thing to happen, and, and the plan was to be a whole lot less money that we're going to have to deal with. I will say that um, we did have a meeting with our state senator and both of our uh, state reps and a representative from our congresswoman, and they are working with us to find if there's anywhere there's um, more grant money or money available that, they, that we may be able to apply to this, or if, if there's a, a way to extend and, and get a very low interest rate loan on this. So there's, while this is going on, they've been working and, and we met with them like three days after we got this news because it's important that we try to keep this under control best that we can. If there's any funds out there, we want to bring them in. So, but we have to do the project. I mean, that's unfortunately where it's at. Wish we had a lot more money come with the project, but that's not always how it happens. So, other questions from the board? Hearing none, what's the pleasure of the board? To the chair. Mr. Jackson. I move for the approval of the bid recommendation. DPS, Water Department, Central, CSO Basin, and Collector Sewer Project to be awarded to Commercial Contracting Corporation, Arwen Hills, Michigan, for 8326 in the amount of $100,324,000 to be paid from the CSO Central Basin Fund. Support. Support by Treasurer Kavanaugh. So the motion is to, to, to approval, for the approval of the bid recommendation, DPS, Water Department, Central CSO Basin and Collector Sewer Project be awarded to Commercial Contracting Corporation, Auburn Hills, Michigan, 48326 in the amount of $100,324,000 to be paid from the CSO Central Basin Fund. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Christie, yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Kavanaugh? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Motion carries. Director Dennis. Mr. Supervisor, in front of you is a memo. Um, resolution, right? Sorry, I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I actually passed out a copy of the resolution. The state would like a separate resolution um, included um, that I found out late midday Thursday, so there was just a template sent out to you. Um, I was not, not here to be able to get it typed up before it went out, but I was at least wanted to share the template. Did write it this morning. Um, and so this is a resolution uh, per, this, per the state's request, tentatively awarding a construction contract for wastewater sewer improvements, basically stating that, um, that this board has, um, on, that you firmly adopted, it was February 2nd, 2024, which is when you approve the amended project plan. When we, we came in 22, uh, we were denied, and then we applied again in 2023, 20, uh, and we were awarded. Um, this is the amount that was uh, that was approved uh, for commercial contracting. 
that we trim has recommended awarding the contract to a low bidder and it was attached with your um, earlier um, approval um, that uh, we are tentatively awarding the contract um, to commercial country corporation uh, com contingent upon successful financial arrangements with eagle cw srf program and therefore the board today is approving um, said resolution um, on july uh, 23rd 2024. questions from the board hearing none what's the pleasure of the board to the chair I move that we approve the resolution that will tentatively award a construction contract for the wastewater improvements regarding the construction of the central CSO basin in the sewer collector project. Support. Supported by Trustee Jackson. Motion is approval of the attached resolution that will tentatively award a construction contract for water, wa wastewater system improvements regarding the construction of the central CSO basin and sewer collection collector project. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Jackson. Yes. Ms. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Cavanaugh. Yes. Mr. Christie. Yes. Mr. McCray. Yes. Motion carries. Director Dennis. Thank you. Just uh, stuff up. Um, also, the next item here is part of the, the process for the state. Is we also had to um, to solicit for um, the professional services. They call it the construction engineering um, investigation. Excuse me, construction engineering inspection. And uh, for the states, uh, we called it a QBS. And uh, so part of it, we did receive three quotes from local companies. Uh, one company we did bring up that I had never heard before, and their address was even then in their, uh, their RFQ uh, that I could find. Uh, so we had a meeting um, with Wade Trim uh, last week regard, uh, for the state uh, requirements. And after going through the whole process, the, 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 uh, the amount, uh, we, we, we got their, their, um, their quote for this will be your three year period uh, for the, again, for the construction engineering inspection, also acting as our owner's representative assistance during the entire project. That will be from the three year contract construction, as well as up to one year of, um, of facility uh, testing. Uh, anywhere from probably, I've been told, 8 to 12 months to get the, the facility online uh, for state rest. Um, after we went through everything uh, for, for the state, it was our recommendation that a contract be awarded away trim the amount of $9,597,580, which includes the multiple working tasks, staffing plan, project schedules, detailed throughout the construction operational startup phases. Um, also, funding for this project will also be allocated from Fund 592. 592, excuse me. Um, and if you have any questions. Questions on the board? There ain't no questions. What's the, question, what's the pleasure of the board? To the chair. Trustee Jackson. I move for the approval of a contract to be awarded to Wade Trim Associates Incorporated, Taylor, Michigan. 48180 in the amount of nine million five hundred ninety seven thousand five hundred and eighty dollars which includes multiple working tasks staffing plan project schedule as detailed throughout the construction and operational startup phases of the central cso basin and collector sewer project to be paid from the cso central basin fund support the movement supported um, the motion is approval of the contract to be awarded to Wade Trim Associates Incorporated, Taylor, Michigan, 48180, in the amount of $9,597,580, which includes multiple working tasks, staffing, plan, project schedules detailed throughout the construction and operational startup phases of the central CSO basin and collector sewer project to be paid for from the CSO Central Basin Fund. Are there any other questions? 
discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Kavanaugh. Yes. Mr. Christie. Yes. Ms. Jackson. Yes. Mr. McCray. Yes. Carries. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Thank you, Wade Trim. Um, I just got to say, it's probably the most money we've allocated to be spent at one meeting ever. And, and it's not on happy things, it's on must things. So we'll continue to work to find ways to save during the project. And we'll keep the board and the, and the community updated as we do so. All right, Director Bonneret. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. So that brings us to item five, which is the last piece of this puzzle for now. So all of the items that you just approved in items two, three, and four together add up to the total amount that we're seeking through a bond authorizing resolution to go to the market to uh, obtain these bonds. As Supervisor McCray just said, I believe this will be the largest bond offering we've ever gone to the market for. Um, with that in mind, we do have our bond counsel, Pat McGow from Miller Canfield here tonight, and also one of our financial advisors, Stephen Hayduck from Benzinski and Sons. I think Mr. McGow is probably the best person to talk about the resolution, if he wouldn't mind going to the podium. Thank you, good evening members of the board. Uh, as uh, has already been stated, this really is the financing piece to generate the funds to pay the cost of this project. And as uh, Mike Dennis indicated in his lead-in, uh, originally the number was expected to be 55 million, then we got funding for 65 million, and when the bids came in, the total project cost, which is the construction bid, plus the engineering, plus the administrative costs, plus the 7% contingency, totals approximately $117,130,000. Now, as of right now, the state has committed to provide funding through the Clean Water State Revolving Fund uh, in an amount of 65,100,000. That was the number that they had uh, committed to back in February. And of that 65.1 million, 20 million of it is what they call principal forgiveness. So that means that even though the note or the bond is gonna say 65.1 million, as soon as you draw it, they forgive 20 million. It's like a grant. Uh, so that is what they've committed to to date. Uh, as has already been stated, there have been several calls and meetings over the last couple of weeks to try to increase the amount of the funding. And they are working on that, and we would expect that that information would be available in the next uh, two to three weeks. Um, and that's because the timing of this is, uh, you know, the state has 60 communities that are in this fourth quarter pool of water and sewer projects. So you are one of those 60 communities. So the deadlines are very rigid, the milestones that they, they have on when certain things need to happen. Uh, this was obviously a surprise, and so they are trying to figure out how much additional funding they have to be able to offer that to the township, either in the form of uh, additional funding through the low interest loan program, which is 2% in 30 years, possibly principal forgiveness. And if they don't have additional funding, then the township would need to go out into the bond market to borrow money for that cost overrun. So what we have here tonight is really the resolution for the borrowing through the state revolving fund. Now the good news is that the state program uh, provides for a low interest loan of 2% for the 30 years. And the way that works is that you draw that down as you incur expenses. So you don't pay, you don't get all the money up front, but you also don't pay any interest until you draw it down. And it's gonna take several years to draw down that money for the construction project. Uh, and also, if you don't use it all, then you don't draw it and you don't have to pay that back. So that does provide some flexibility. Um, what we did for the resolution tonight, because of the deadlines and the fact that uh, you've already had to submit applications and they're gonna be finalizing these numbers, uh, we have asked the township to approve uh, the bond in the amount of 117,130,000, which is the total amount of the project. Um, that way, if they do provide loan funding for you uh, for the full amount, this covers it. Uh, if they provide something less than that, then this will allow us to still proceed in the program and then figure out where the additional funding will come from. 
and you've already mentioned possibly some other sources. In addition to an open market bond, maybe there's federal grant funds or something that state or federal legislators can assist with. So this is really here designed tonight to give us the authorization to participate in the program up to the full amount that they might offer us, which we won't know for sure for a few weeks. Um, if approved by you tonight, that allows us to go forward with the program. They will finalize that loan amount uh, by August 17th, probably before that. We might know as, as early as the next week or so. But it's uh, the state will issue an order confirming the amount of the loan and the forgiveness uh, when they finalize it for their program on August 16th. And then the township would sign a purchase contract confirming that loan amount uh, August 19th and then the closing on this part of the financing would be September 6th. So everything's kind of moving here in the next several weeks to finalize the number. Um, I will say that um, if it turns out that they don't provide funding uh, at this time for the full 117 million, we actually have time to wait until um, we, we do the additional funding for whatever that extra amount is. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, you know, whether we need the approval now or later. Um, but again, because there's a 6% contingency, lots of things can happen during the construction, we don't really know what the full amount is going to be. And so we might uh, instead wait until we get further into the project uh, if they don't provide the full funding before coming back to the board to ask for any kind of additional money. So really what this does is it authorizes the bond or the loan from the state up to 117 million 130,000 with the understanding that if they provide less than that number we might need to come back at some point in the next uh, couple years before the project is complete for whatever would be needed to finish the project and the funding so that's essentially what this does uh, again as has already been said as the supervisor indicated this is something that you are being ordered to do by the state so they have issued an order as part of the uh, discharge permit and I know the board is aware of that so this is something that you have to do uh, as, as a township to uh, do this project in order to uh, address this issue uh, with the CSO basin uh, but that also means that you have the ability to issue the bonds for that uh, this is set up to be what's called a limited tax general obligation of the township which is similar to the other types of bonds where you've done where the township is essentially promising the state, we will pay you back with whatever funds we have available, including levying taxes to pay it. Now this is expected to be paid back from your sewer system revenues. Uh, and I know that you've talked about that over the last couple of years with the rate structure for that. The reason it's pledging the limited tax full faith and credit of the township is that allows the township to use its existing credit rating, which is an investment grade rating, to satisfy the state's requirements for participating in the program. So I just wanted to say that even though it says it's payable and pledges the township's taxes, it's expected this is gonna be paid from sewer customer rates, not from taxes or from the general fund. So, um, but that was done to give you the lowest cost of the financing and flexibility for participating in the state's program. Um, this resolution is the last action item for the board to allow us to move forward with the program and then it authorizes various township officials to sign the documentation, which would also include approving the final loan amount uh, once the state provides that to us. Uh, that would be the supervisor, treasurer, clerk, and finance director who are authorized to take the necessary actions to finalize the loan paperwork. So uh, with that, I'll stop talking and answer any questions you may have about the resolution or the financing for the project. Um, Mr. McGill, Mr. McGill, I, I guess I would have, Talk, make sure I'm clear. So, if we're going to get that kind, of, we're asking for that money, and we get a lot of money coming in, we're not having to. They're not. We're locked locked into it. We're not paying a penalty if we don't want to use all that money. Did we get money from somewhere else? Correct. Okay. So my next question is, if we get super lucky and we get down to thirty million, are we going to still get the twenty million forgiven? Or we have to spend a certain amount in order to get that 20 million for you. So, Mike's had more conversation. I think the answer is, uh, well, if you say super lucky, like you're you're going to get uh, the the assumption is that the state is, is has already said you're going to get 65 million in loan, which includes 20 million of forgiveness. Okay. It will not be less than that. But if you think you're going to get money from somewhere else for the other 40 million, that would be great. 
um, if you didn't need to borrow the full 65, they would probably reduce the 20 million forgiveness if okay. you're not borrowing the full 65. Okay. All right. But uh, you know, right now that is uh, expected to be okay. received. I think the discussions that, that we've had, the additional funding is probably not gonna be principal forgiveness. If anything, it would be increasing the loan amount uh, at the 2% rate, which okay. is still a, a much better rate than you would get if you had to go sure. borrow that in the bond sure. market. Okay. Mr. Chair. Treasurer Kavanaugh. Just a quick question. Um, if let's say that we get the 117 approval from start to finish, how long is that going to take for the bonding process? So the bonding process is going to be completed by September. Okay. Uh, so that, but but uh, to, to address the supervisor's question, you know, if there's two different ways that this bond amount can be reduced. Uh, the first is if in the next two to three weeks they come back and say, we're only going to give you, let's say, $80 million, including 20 forgiveness. The bond documents may say the loan is 80 million, of which 20 is going to be forgiven. Uh, so that's one way that that number gets reduced is between now and the actual uh, order being issued by Eagle in the closing. But if after the closing, after September, as you go through the construction process, you don't need to draw down the full bond, you will not have to pay back that amount. So when you close out the loan, meaning after the two to, what is it, two to three year construction project, three years. the state will then look and see how much did you draw. If it's less than the full loan amount, they apply the forgiveness and reduce the amount and adjust the schedule. So uh, you still have time to find ways to cut costs or provide additional funding. Uh, and at that point, the loan number is really the maximum amount you can draw. But if you come up with savings along the way, then you wouldn't have to borrow the full amount or pay that back. All right, thank you to, to the chair. So just in layman's terms for simplification um, as a business owner, so it would be similar to just having an open-ended business loan. It's there for your need if you need it, but if you obviously if you don't use the money, there's nothing to pay back. Yeah, I think that's, that's similar, similar to a, a line of credit or a draw. Yeah, you, okay. You only pay on what you draw out. Exactly, okay, thank you. Other questions from the board? Any other question? It was the pleasure of the board, Mr. Chair. Trustee King, I move approval of the bond authorizing resolution for one hundred seventeen million one hundred and thirty thousand dollars limited tax general obligation bonds series twenty twenty four clean water state revolving fund bonds for the CSO central treatment retention basin. Clean Water State Revolving Fund project. Support. Supported by Treasurer Kavanaugh. So the motion on the floor is the approval of the bonding authorization resolution for $117,130,000 limited, limited tax general obligation bonds series 2024 clean water state revolving fund bonds for the CSO Central Treatment Retention Basin CWSRF project. Okay. Any other questions from the board? To the chair. Treasurer, Treasurer Kavanaugh. Just a quick question, Adam. Yeah. When we draw down, does that go directly to the invoice that we need to draw from or to pay? Or does it does the funds come into the township and then go out as a as we're, are we a conduit or does the payment go directly to that invoice will be a conduit. So I'm the way the drawdowns usually work is that we will have to submit certified payments applications that we paid these expenses and are requesting gotcha. that reimbursement. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Kavanaugh. Yes. Mr. Christie, yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Pat. Director Bonnerack. Thank you. The last item on your agenda this evening is the approval of the employment agreement to promote Timothy Young to become the new senior housing manager for Minock Meadows. As uh, 
many of you know, our longtime senior housing manager, Rob Roach, is retiring at the end of this month. And a little over a year ago, the staff over there began the process of talking about who are we going to find to replace Rob. And so the position of the maintenance supervisor was created really with the intent that that person would hopefully be the person to be promoted. And so, you know, uh, Tim Young was hired last uh, year and um, everybody has just raved about how wonderful he has been in that role. And Director Mancini would like to promote him to be the senior housing manager. She is on her family vacation this evening, which is why I am presenting this on her behalf. Mr. Young is here this evening if he would like to ask many questions. I think you come up and introduce yourself, please. Good evening, board. My name is Tim Young. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. It is with uh, some condolences, though, that uh, Rob is not here this evening. His brother is in the hospital, so he does send um, condolences that he could not make it here. Um, I know that he has enjoyed his almost 24 years with uh, Minoc Meadows, so. Um, it's going to be a huge hole to fill, and um, his presence will certainly be missed. It is definitely is as much a part of Minock Meadows as Minock Meadows is a part of him. So um, I definitely am really looking forward to the opportunity to continue serving this community and um, the people at Minock Meadows. So if you have any questions, I'm definitely here to answer them. Questions from the board? Oh, you have been doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> so I've been told because you go into our department, but um, you're here for 24 years as well, correct? Uh, that's the intent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That's, that's all I needed. <laughs> Other questions from the board? Just for Adam. Just for Adam. Go ahead, Adam. Don't go no more. Go ahead. Um, Adam, if you can answer this question, it might be more of an HR. Do we know what grade and staff that Rob is currently at as a 24-year employee in that position? Yes, Rob is at, I believe, grade three, step 12, which would be the top of the scale, okay. which would make sense for how long he's been here. And the recommendation for step six, which is like already halfway there? Yeah, um, just based on our history for how we have handled other internal promotions like that, where we've moved them one grade, which is what we're doing, we've moved them a flat step to step, because that makes it a flat 10% increase for the additional duties. Okay, so currently the, um, the position that Tim currently holds... Is grade two, step six. So it's, just, it's a jump in grade? Correct. Same step. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the board? To the chair. I move to approve the employment agreement to promote Timothy Young into the senior housing manager position at Minock Meadows Senior Housing Complex at the annual compensation rate of a grade three, step six. Support. Board by Trustee Kennedy. Motion is the approval of the employment agreement to promote Timothy Young into the senior housing management position at Minock Meadows Senior Housing Complex at the annual compensation rate at grade three, step six. Other questions from the board? Jury none, roll call vote. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Kavanaugh? Yes. Mr. Christie, yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm sure you do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, announcements from the board. Mr. Chairman. Bert Christie. You know, we have an August 6th uh, primary election schedule, but you can actually start voting as early as July 27th. Vote early, and that's what I'm encouraging everyone to do, um, uh, particularly because we have some precinct precincts that have been relocated because of uh, remodeling done to the schools. And uh, those people, they, they don't have to come uh, and, and vote early. They do have the option of going to vote 
uh, for one time at a different location. And I'm, I'm gonna call on my deputy to come up and uh, let those people know uh, where they can, if they refuse to come in and vote early, and they, they want to, uh, you know, be kind of like a, a road trip or something, you know, try to find their location. They, we've mailed out a map to them, but uh, I'll ask my, uh, Jerry and Bert, my deputy, to uh, fill voters in on, on uh, where, where their uh, right. one-time voting location is. Thank you, so we sent out uh, some postcards this week actually, and they look something, this is kind of a mock-up, something like this, and on the back says a temporary location uh, for the polling place, and it also has a map on there as well. So uh, it shows all of the streets, you can't really get lost going to your new location. And so if you're at Jefferson or Vandenberg, you will be at Adams Elementary School. If you're at Hilbert, you've been moved to Our Lady of Loretto. And then if you are at either World Peace Outreach, Pierce, or Fisher, you've been moved to Thurston High School. Uh, the deadline also, just a couple of housekeeping things, deadline to be a write-in candidate is uh, this Friday, the 26th. So if you choose to be a write-in candidate, the deadline is Friday. And then while you cannot go to the Secretary of State and um, register to vote on time for the election, if you do come into the clerk's office, you can register to vote and be able to vote uh, and get a ballot for the August 6th election. As Clerk Christie already said, early voting starts on the 27th and ends on the 4th, 8.30 to 4.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you. That's, that's all? Okay. Well, no, actually, this is for the clerk. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, is there a map of all the precincts, the current precincts? We. Had Yes, it's on, it's on the bulletin board uh, out there, but for this election, that map's not going to apply because we ha have uh, uh, the schools doing right. remodeling. So uh, for this election only, uh, we've sent out the, uh, the postcards with the, the uh, uh, maps showing where the, the temporary uh, locations will be. Right, but do you have an overall map where it tells it's, us where it's the on temporary the well, uh, I mean, well, no, not with, no. with the temporary ones. We, that would... Because they're only temporary. That would cost more money than just to send out a small postage than to, to create a big map with the new. Because it's not really new, it's, it's temporary. So we wouldn't create a whole bunch of, of these long maps if, if it's only used for August. It won't be for November. How about a list of precincts? Only because some of us need to know yeah, <laughs> where okay. the precincts are, maybe a list of precincts. I do have a list. We can post the list and have that okay. have that out. Okay. My intent is also to have on the LED screen at DP, the DPS building and here that have um, uh, the, these, these changes for people to know. So, uh, in the you know when you walk into DPS, the, there's the big TV screen, yeah. and then we have the TV screen here. My intent is for voters to always be aware of what's going on, so that should be on there this week. Okay, so and we just reach out to you and say we need a list of, pre, of the temporary precincts, but all together. Yes. Okay. That's fine. You. Okay. Thank you. Sweet. Anything else? Any other announcements? Uh, okay, I only have a couple things to say. Uh, for those of you that know Dwayne Gregg, who is a police officer in this community and, and serves us to this day, his mother passed away this past week. So if you see Dwayne, please make sure you offer your condolences. Um, this is the last meeting before election. So I want to thank everybody who signed up to run for election to do their duties. I encourage everybody to go out and vote and vote for people that you think will serve the community at all levels well. And please go out and vote because this is the chance for your voice to be heard. And other than that, I, I don't have anything else. I know we have some music out there to go listen to, and I don't know if the food truck's still serving or not, but Kelsey Taylor's saying yes. <laughs> so if there's nothing else before this board, this meeting is adjourned.